Hello, Laurie McFarland here coming to you this week after Easter. As we as believers remember and celebrate and marvel and worship God for the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. His sacrifice ensures our salvation for all of eternity. And I pray that for myself and for all of you listening to me, that that's a truth that never becomes so familiar that it's rendered meaningless or ho-hum in our lives. May we continue to lean in to marveling at the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. And in fact, our Write the Word bookmark this month is on the word work. I hope you've downloaded your own copy and you're writing the word with us each day. And one of the verses on the bookmark is found in John 17, 4. These are the words of our Lord Jesus Christ. And they're so appropriate for us to remember this week after Easter as Jesus is preparing for the cross. What would one possibly do to prepare for what he knew he was facing? This horrific, painful death, this separation from the Father, taking the weight of the world upon himself. And he enters into the garden and and he's on his knees. He's praying to God, the Father. He communes with his heavenly Father. That's how he prepares for what he was facing. And these are the words that he says to God Almighty in John 17, 4. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And God did have work for Jesus to do. Before Jesus left his throne on high in heaven, he agreed to that work. He leaned into that work. He condescended to come to earth, to be born a baby, to be limited by time and space and by a human body, to grow and then have this ministry. The work that Jesus completed on earth included his messages, his miracles, his training of the disciples, And then, of course, because God exists outside of time, even as this took place, this prayer the night before the crucifixion, of course, it looks forward to the completed work of the cross. It looks forward to Jesus ensuring our salvation by following through and and drinking that cup of suffering and ensuring through his death that once and for all sacrifice, he was the Lamb of God that took away our sins and the sins of all those who by faith place their place their faith in him by grace and have their identity in him. And I hope that includes you if you're listening. I hope that you know in your heart that you've made that decision, that you're placed your faith in Jesus Christ. Sometimes we question our salvation. We wonder, do I have enough faith? Do, 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 do I really believe what I say I believe? We, we come to him by faith. And even that faith is a gift from him. And just the fact that we come to him, is a, is a decision by faith. I believe that God will call anyone who will answer. And I believe he's offering that gift of salvation because he says that, that he's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to know him. If you know him, if your salvation by, has been ensured by placing your faith through the grace of Jesus Christ and God Almighty, then your destiny for eternity is, to eternity is forever changed. But like Jesus who prayed in the garden, There is also work for you and me to do. Have you thought about that? That God has assigned work for you even before the creation of the world. There is work for us that comes after our salvation, not as a prerequisite for it. We don't earn God's favor, earn our salvation by tithing or serving or giving or doing the right things. That's legalism. And, And our good works could never bring about salvation. It is a work an act of grace off by Jesus Christ from beginning to end. But if we have placed our faith in Christ, then there is work for us to do. Have you asked the Lord, what is the work that you have me to do? Who are we going to love on today? How do you want me to spend the, the, the finite time that I have on this planet? Lord, what is the work that you have for me to do? And indeed, Paul challenges us over the book of Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 and 13. He writes this, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Are we working out the salvation that God has placed in us as we accepted that gift of faith by grace in Jesus Christ? We serve and work, friends, not to be saved, but because we already are saved. My husband likes to say, you don't bark to become a dog, but if you are a dog, you're going to bark. We don't do good works to become a believer, but if we are believers, Good works should naturally flow from us. And as we lean into that work that God has assigned to us, as we join him in the work that he has laid out for us, 
that that he is a portion to us. I think that's the pathway to really have joy and peace, real delight and satisfaction in partnering with God, leaning in, following where he leads to do the work that he has us to do. If you're if you're a believer and you know you're a believer, but your your world just feels a little gray and drab, then perhaps you're not working out your salvation. Are you spending more time in the recliner than on your feet? Or are you filling your mind in your ears with with just chaff, straw, things that will blow away by the wind? Do you ask yourself, what have I invested in yesterday or last week or last month or the whole last year? What have I put my heart and mind to that will withstand the fire, that will stand the, the test of time? I love what it says over in Proverbs 13. The soul of the diligent shall be made rich. And our soul should be diligent as on this side of the cross, on this side of accepting the, the free gift that he offers. We should be diligent to work out our salvation. And so I want to ask you, and as I ask myself, are we rich in things eternal? Are we storing up treasures in heaven? And what have we done? What have we invested in that is going to withstand the fire and not that can't rust out or wear out or be replaced? What will stand for all of eternity? The soul of the diligent shall be made rich. Are we rich in things that really matter? Could we make that our prayer to ask the Lord to make us rich in him, to awaken our hearts and minds morning by morning, to embrace the truth of scripture, to to teach, ask him to continue to teach us from his word, to make us rich in what really matters and to lean in, to take hold of the work that he asked for us to do, to ask each day as we complete our, our quiet time, not just closing that book of our Bibles and going on about a, a normal day, but asking the Lord, how do I apply what you've taught me? Who shall we love on today? How do you want me to use these days stretched out before me to invest in something that's really going to matter for all of eternity? I want to chase after things that, that matter. When you get to my age and you realize you've lived more days on this planet than you have left on this planet, then you begin to think about those things. I want to live a life that matters. I want to live for the glory of God Almighty. And may you and I come to the end of our lives and declare with satisfaction as Jesus did to the Father, oh Lord God Almighty, I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. For Cross My Heart Ministry, I'm Lauren McFarland. May we be found busy and being about the Lord's work. If we love him, May we also obey him and serve him. Have a blessed week.